Hello, and thank you for tuning in to episode 7 of Jake in Georgia and my Quarantube series. Today, I am going to be discussing my number one gripe with Ford. Yes, I do have a Ford F-150. I bought that truck brand new. It's a 2013 model, bought it brand new with 10 miles on it from Barrel Ford in Zillianople. And to this day, that marks the last good experience that I have had with a Ford dealership. Now, there's a lot of things that I have come to despise about Ford over the years, but the number one reason why I absolutely hate Ford and will never buy another vehicle from them is not because the company cuts corners and they've gotten cheaper over time uh, with issues like the F27 fuse that they have put in these trucks. The fuse burns up and it can literally set the truck on fire or just shut it down on you in the middle of the highway causing a safety hazard. No, that's not the number one reason why I hate them. The number one reason why I hate them isn't because of their fuel pump driver module that they've decided to locate on the underbody of the vehicle above the spare tire on top of a uh, frame mount where it gets trashed with road grime, road salt, mud, dirt, all kinds of things that cause it to break down and malfunction and when the fuel pump driver module quits on you then the truck shuts down. No, no, that's not the number one reason why I hate Ford. It's not because of the output speed sensor on their transmissions that they put on the vehicles that cause you to slam from sixth gear into first gear and go skidding across the highway at 70 miles per hour. No, no, that's not it. It's not because they've only recalled one of those problems, which was the OSS sensor, and not the other two, which are equally life-threatening in my opinion. No, that's not the number one reason why I hate Ford and I'll never go back to their product. None of those compare to the real reason why Ford is the worst. Ford isn't the worst because they play to the xenophobes of the country and want to tout an all-American vehicle. Ford pickup truck, America, get those patriots all riled up. Meanwhile, they use a bunch of parts that are made in Mexico. I've pulled a number of those made in Mexico parts off of my own truck while doing my own work, so I know that's the case. No, 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 that's not the number one reason why Ford is the worst. Ford is the worst for something that is way worse than all of those things combined. It's the number one thing that a company should take into consideration and perfect above all else. And Ford, they just don't care about this aspect of business. Ford is the worst simply because they have the worst customer service out of any business that I have come across. They just don't care. After they've sold you the vehicle, they just don't care. And I'm going to go through a couple examples that I've had with different Ford dealerships and how I think they're greasy and how I know that they don't care about the customer and how I know that all that the Ford dealership wants to do is get more of your money. The first time I really noticed that Ford was being greasy was after I moved to Virginia Beach. The truck was brand new at this time. I had just purchased it at the Barrel Ford in Zillianople and less than six months later, I moved to the Virginia Beach area in the state of Virginia. And at that time, my plan was to always take the truck to a dealership. It was brand new. I always wanted to take the truck to the dealership, have dealership work done on it. 
I didn't care if it cost me a little bit more. I wanted the dealership to do the work. I wanted the dealership documentation. That's the route that I wanted to go in my mind. So if Ford have only had good customer service, they could have had somebody who for at least seven years, because I've had the truck for seven years now, would have always gone to their dealership for their vehicle and to have their, their work done. But what I witnessed Ford do at Virginia Beach, Beach Ford location, was something that really set me off. Three different things happened to me at Beach Ford that really turned me off on the dealerships. The first thing, whenever I went to Beach Ford, I would get a service done called the works. And basically what that was is they'd check all your fluids, they would check your tires, and Beach Ford, they did this tire alignment check and you would get a piece of paper after your service was done and it would show your tires and there were three ways that your tires could be presented to you on this piece of paper one was your tires would be green and they would be straight showing that your tires are in alignment the other option was your tires would come back and the paper would show that they were yellow which would mean that uh, they're slightly out of alignment you know maybe we want to keep an eye on them or maybe you want to get them straightened out today and then the third option on that was your tires would be shown in red indicating that they were out of alignment and something needed to be done well I didn't think that that was right because I, I really pay attention to my vehicle and I didn't think that my truck the way that I drove it and the terrain that I was on I didn't think that my tires were going to be out of alignment like that. So I just ignored it and I went on my merry way and then I would go back for another service. And what really, what really confused me, and you'd think that they'd have their own records of this, is that one service I would go in there, my tires would show green and straight. Then the next service I would go in there and the paper would show that they're red and they're out of alignment. And then I go back in for a following service and they'd be green and straight and in alignment again, which really got me thinking, I mean, is my truck self-healing? Is it repairing itself? Is it putting itself back into alignment all on its own? That's great. I know that uh, modern technology is great these days, but if a truck can learn how to do that, I'm very impressed. That's when the red flags really started going up for me on Ford and I really started paying attention to what they did with customers from that point forward. The second issue that I had with Beach Ford is my horn on my truck actually stopped working. And I had tried taking the uh, harness off of the horn and cleaning it out and putting in some dielectric grease and replugging the harness to the horn and I just could not get the horn to work anymore. So when I went back in for my next works package to be done, I had them do a check on the horn. So I get uh, my, my service paperwork back at the end of that service, and the advisor tells me, yeah, they checked out the horn. The horn is no good anymore. You're going to need a new one. And for some reason to me, that didn't seem right either. So I got my truck back and I took it home and I opened the hood and I looked at the horn and it did look like they tried doing some cleaning too and it looked like they may have unplugged it, cleaned it out, greased it up, connected it again like I did to try to remedy the problem. So I'm like, eh, you know what, it may, maybe, maybe not. But then I took it apart once more and I really inspected it and I really took my time cleaning it and putting more of the dielectric grease in there and I hooked it back up and lo and behold my horn worked and my horn has been working for the last five years since I've done that so there was nothing wrong with the horn if I would have purchased a new horn from them I think it would have been around hundred and fifty dollars um, that's just me going from memory now but still pretty expensive to buy something completely new that really didn't have a problem with it in the first place the third and final straw that happened at Beach Ford, it actually didn't happen to me, but it 
It was something that I observed happen to another customer there. So I was in the garage area where they have their desks for the service advisors. And there was a gentleman who came in and he had a cracked windshield and he needed to have his windshield replaced. So they did what they always do. They ask for his VIN number and they look up the VIN and they immediately told this guy what windshield he needed. And as I'm listening to this, I realized they told him that he needed the most expensive windshield that there is. Now, there's nothing special with these windshields, really. It's Some of them have F-150 stamped up in the top center of the windshield. Others have a different tint that goes across the top portion of the windshield. And others are just a plain old windshield. But of course, all of those come at a different price point. The one with the stamped F-150 and the tint at the top is going to be the most expensive windshield option there is. And the mid-range windshield would be the one that does not have the F-150 in it, but just the tint. And then the lowest priced windshield would just be your basic plain old windshield. Well, they never explained to this guy that he had three different options at three different price points. The only one that they told him was the most expensive one, which was the windshield with the F-150 stamped at the top of it. And this guy, I, I don't think that he had any knowledge of that. Maybe he did. I never talked to him and I didn't bring it up to anybody there, but I knew, I knew this. I had this knowledge and when I listened to it, it just really irritated me that the only option that the Ford service advisor gave to this gentleman was the most expensive option. I did not think that was fair and I think that Ford should present its customers with all of the options in front of them so they can make the best decision for themselves and for their bank account. So that was the last straw at Beach Ford and then shortly after that I moved to Georgia and after that I had sworn off Ford dealerships. But then I decided to give them one last try. After moving to Georgia, a couple other things happened with the truck. I had a um, window regulator go out on me. And if you don't know what the window regulator is, it's the system. It's the mechanical system that raises and lowers the power windows. The one on the driver's side, there's a wire in there. That wire broke, so I need to get a new window regulator. I got that from them, and I had a good experience with that because they got the part in for me within a day. I also bought some other products from them, fluids, coolant. Uh, I needed some O-rings for one of the coolant hoses because they warp and can cause a leak. So I bought all kinds of parts from this Ford dealer here in Georgia, and that dealer was Wade Ford. And I had a very good experience with, with parts. And when I was there buying parts, everybody seemed pleasant. I liked how the dealership looked. I liked how it was laid out and I began to think, well, you know, maybe this one isn't that bad. So later on down the line, I had an issue that I could not diagnose myself with the truck. In the long run, I did end up diagnosing it myself, but initially I could not diagnose it myself. And against my better judgment, I decided to give Wade Ford a shot just based off of my part buying experience with them. I looked them up and I read the story of Mr. Ewing who oversees that dealership and it was a great story. He seemed like a, a great guy who had it all together. So I decided to give Wade Ford a shot. And the issue that I was having with my truck is that the RPMs were reading excessively low. So the truck should be idling, idle RPM should be between 500 and 700 RPMs. Well, the needle on the tachometer gauge was like reading 100 at best, and then it was just gradually getting worse and worse. So I tackled everything that I could. I looked at the fuel pump driver module again. I looked at that F27 fuse. I took off my throttle body, inspected it. It looked fine, but I still did a full cleaning on it. 
I cleaned the mass airflow sensor, I changed the air filter, I did everything that I could possibly think of that would have an impact on these low RPMs. And then when I couldn't get it figured out, I made my appointment with Wade Ford and this is where everything went to hell in a handbasket. I took my truck to Wade Ford and when I took it to them, I wrote a list and I made myself a copy of this list too that outlined to them everything that I had checked, everything that I had done and had rolled out and then I put in there things that I couldn't check that I would like them to check. And the first thing on that list was I wanted them to do a presser, pressure check on the fuel system to make sure that the engine was getting the appropriate amount of fuel to it. And because of it, if it was being starved for fuel, then the RPMs would get mixed up. So I wanted them to do a, a fuel pressure check for me. And I had to go out of town at this time. So I had rented a vehicle. I wasn't worried about it. I left my truck at Wade Ford for a week. And when I came back, things really went off the rails. When I came back to get my truck from Wade Ford after a week, I had found out that they didn't do anything with it that I asked them to do. They didn't even look at the truck for some reason. So that really upset me. And then two things happened after that. I left the truck with them for some additional time because they had asked. They were like, just give us one more day. I'm like, okay. So I gave them one more day. And when I got back, they had changed out the throttle body on it. And I'm like, uh, that's one of the things that I had already checked. It looked all right, but let me see. So I go and I get my truck. I start it right there on their property and wouldn't you know the RPMs barely read above zero and they wanted to tell me that that was the problem. So with the RPMs not even budging barely at all I took the truck directly back into their garage and showed them what was going on and at that point two other things had happened. One, they did not want to refund me the cost of the throttle body that they put on there. Now, mind you, I, I didn't even drive this truck a tenth of a mile. I took it from a parking spot on their lot back into the garage. And they said that they would not refund me the throttle body cost, which was $600 because the part was on my truck and now it was used. Well, that, that didn't sit well for me. And, and we'll get more to that in a second. The other thing that they said they could do and that they suggested to do was a carbon cleaning on the engine. If you're not familiar with what a carbon cleaning is, to me it's something that you should only do as a last resort. Basically what happens is they fill your engine up with a chemical that cleans out carbon deposits. Well, it sounds good. And for cleaning carbon, it's good. But what this also affects are seals and gaskets within the motor. And the risk of doing this service is that gaskets such as a head gasket can be affected and can be ruined by this. And if they do that and the gasket goes, then the gasket isn't going to be covered. You're going to be fixing a motor at that point. And I take super good care of this truck. This, this truck, and, and they didn't even scope it, first off. They didn't even scope it to see if there were carbon deposits. They had nothing to go on to tell them that there were any buildup of carbon deposits. Later, I did an inspection on my truck and found that the carbon buildup is very minimal in there because I take good care of it. I know how to take care of my truck. So they wanted to do that, and I told them no. And finally, I worked out a deal with the uh, service manager his name was Jason, real son of a bitch. He's the one that initially didn't want to refund me the throttle body cost. But finally, I worked out a deal with him that I was going to take off the throttle body right there on their premises, on their lot. I was going to put my old throttle body back on, give it to him. He would refund me my money, and that would be the last that we ever saw of one another. So, 
I decided to move my truck to an area of their dealership lot where nobody else could see me to do this as not to affect any other customers. As angry as I was, I still tried to do the right thing for Ford by doing my own work at the dealership on my truck out of eye shot of potential customers. So what happened is I moved my truck behind a fence off of their lot, off of their service lot, off of their sales lot, and I tucked my truck behind a fence where their parts area is. So nobody's really going back there. The majority of customers aren't going back to this area, and I figured that would be the best spot for me to be. Well, I'm back there and I'm working on my truck, and I'm approached by another Wade Ford employee. This employee was Michael Lattimore. Michael Lattimore came up to me and started getting on me because I had my truck in the way of vehicles coming in and out of their parts area. Now, while I was there, multiple trucks had come in and out. Nobody had gotten out and indicated that I was in their way or affecting their workflow in any way, shape, or form. So when Michael brought this up to me, I was very surprised by it. And then he came up and uh, he was hassling me, to which I responded, I don't want to talk to any of you motherfuckers right now. And then whenever I said that, Michael decided to threaten to call the cops on me. Well, little did Michael know that I was actually making this video. And when I started to roll video on him and ask him his name, he began to quickly walk away from me. He would not give me his name. For some reason, when I was asking him for his name, he decided to ask me for mine. I told him my name is Jake, and then he still refused to give me his name. So this clip right here is going to show the interaction that I had with Mr. Michael Lattimore. Well, that sure ain't 400 RPMs, is it? That's not even close. That's, like, that's nothing. So I'm outside in the Wade Ford parking lot. Guess what I'm going to be doing? After arguing with these fucking dumbasses, I'm going to be removing a part from my truck, throttle body. $600 part, right? So that's what would solve the issue. Didn't want to refund me. Eventually I'm like, you know what? I want you fucking looking at the truck. They want to do an engine decarb. You know what an engine decarb is? It's when they fill your engine with a chemical and then you know, yeah, it'll break up carbon. Guess what else it's going to do? It's going to bust up a bunch of gaskets, head gaskets, everything else. And then when the head gasket blows, they aren't going to cover it. And they recommend an engine decarb without even looking to see if there was carbon built up in the engine. Sold me a $600 throttle body. Had to argue with them in there. Basically said, you know what? I don't want to deal with you anymore. You don't have to deal with me anymore. I'll give you the throttle body back. You refund me my money. So what I'm going to do right here in their own fucking parking lot, rip that piece off, put my old one back on, hand them the one they sold me, get my money back. Hello again, Instagram, just out here, out at Wade Ford. Got customers working on their own vehicles in the dealership parking lot because they can't figure out what the fuck they're doing in there. Good job, Wade Ford. You know, it's not just Wade Ford, though. I've been to five different Ford dealerships in three different states. Uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Virginia Beach, uh, Pittsburgh, or Silly Noble, Pennsylvania, Virginia Beach, Virginia, and now here I am in Smyrna, Georgia. It was supposed to be one of their premier dealerships. Bull fucking shit. They're all the same. Steelership. Just getting back in here, fixing my own car in the dealership parking lot. What's your name? What's your name? Mr. Wade Ford here just wanted to call the police on me. What's your name? What is it? I'm a paying customer. What what's your name? This guy wanted to call the cops on me. All I asked you to do was move your truck so we can get our trucks in. We work back here. This Guess what? I'm going to move my truck as soon as I get running again because your text can't. You. Did you need an assistance? What's your name? You need an assistance. What's your name? What's your name? Jake. Nice to meet you, Jake. Cool. What's your name? What is it? All right. This will be great on Instagram. Instagram, YouTube. Here you go. Wade Ford. Customer service. It's king. Needless to say, Mr. Lattimore never called the cops on me. I took their throttle body off of my truck. I put my 
original throttle body back onto my vehicle. I took their throttle body back into the service garage, gave it to Jason. Jason refunded me my money and I got the hell out of that dealership and I have never been back to a Ford dealership since that day. They're all snakes. They're all bad. What I ended up doing was a little bit more research on my own and I discovered how to access engineering test mode on the truck. This was something that I didn't even know existed but through Google and looking at different forums I came across how to do this and I'll make a video on this later but long story short this mode actually shows a wealth of information but one of the things that it does is a gauge test on your dash cluster and whenever I did that I then noticed that the tachometer gauge did not test all the way to the right like it should. All the, so basically what happens is the needle in test mode, it'll move all the needles from their starting position on the far left and move them all the way through their entire range maxed out to the far right and then back again. Well, all the needles did that properly except for the tachometer needle. It did not move the full way to the right and it then came back down which I found out indicated that my RPM gauge the tachometer reads 350 RPMs lower than what the truck is actually doing so then, then I did that math and it made sense it then made sense just the gauge is broken there was nothing mechanically wrong with the truck the trucks RPMs weren't anywhere that they should not be it was just that the gauge was broken. So then I was left with an option to fix the cluster. It's $700 for a new gauge cluster. Or since all the other gauges on there work and they work properly, I now mentally know that my gauge is off by 350 RPMs. And can I live with that? I decided, yeah, I can. Now I know mentally I add 350. I know what my RPMs are all the rest of the gauges work and should I ever forget which I won't but should I ever forget how far off that gauge is I now know how to enter into engineering test mode on the truck and I can do my own check on that at any point and know what the gauge is actually reading so in conclusion Ford none of the dealerships are worth your time I wouldn't buy a truck from them anymore because I've rented other vehicles and I've done other inspections on competitors trucks and I especially think that the Dodge Ram 1500 is well above the Ford F-150 right now that's my personal opinion I know the F-150 inside and out so I think that I can make a pretty good educated opinion on which brand is better but I'll leave that up to you anyhow if you do buy a truck from Ford, you better know how to do your own work. You better know how to cross-check their work because if you go to the dealership, they're going to rake you through the coals. They're not trustworthy, not a one of them. That's why guys in the new, we like to refer them to, to them as the Steelership. So Ford, you stink. Mr. Ewing, you had actually called me. This is Mr. Ewing with Wade Ford. You had actually called me to try to make this issue right. Well, the last time we talked, you said that you'd be giving me a call back. I've never received that call back. So should this ever come across your computer screen or your smartphone or your tablet or whatever your rich ass is watching this on and you want to give me a call to really try to make it right, I'm still available. My number's still the same. Reach out to me. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching Jake and Georgia. Quarantube Episode 7. Do yourself a favor. Don't buy a Ford.